In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Nintendo 64 emulator called Simple64, and I will be using Windows 11. Okay, so let's head on over to simple64.github. The link to this page will be in the description below. Once you are here, go ahead and click on Download Emulator. This will take you to the official GitHub page. And as the recording of this video, the latest version is 2024.12.1. Come down here under Assets and click right here. And your download will start. If you don't already have 7-Zip installed on your PC, go ahead and download this program as well. We will be using this to extract the emulator as well as our N64 ROMs. So here on my desktop, I have the simple 64 file and a folder containing some N64 ROMs. Let's go ahead and extract our emulator. Assuming you already have 7-Zip installed, you just want to right click on the file, go to show more options, 7-Zip and extract to simple 64. This is going to create a new folder containing all of your extracted files. We no longer need that zip file, so we can go ahead and right click on it and delete it. Now inside of my N64 ROMs folder, I have some ROMs that are in the compressed format. Now you do not have to extract your ROMs, Simple64 can play zipped files. But if you want your ROMs in the .z64 format, then highlight all of your files, right click, show more options. Go to 7-Zip and this time extract here. Once you get all of your extracted files, go ahead and delete the zip folders. Now if you look over here under type, you will see that our file types are now .z64 files. Now let's open that simple 64 folder, open this folder. And before we open the emulator, we're going to create a new folder in here. So go ahead and right click new folder and name that folder saves and this folder here is where you will find your save files now go ahead and select that folder right click on it go to properties and you want to highlight the entire location right click on it and copy it now let's scroll all the way down and this file here is the actual emulator let's open it go up to settings core and video settings now for the save state path, go ahead and right click next to it and paste. And now type forward slash saves. And we're gonna do the same thing for save as RAM path. Right click, paste, forward slash saves. Now every time you save your game, you will be able to find that save file in that save folder we created. Now let's go over to video. Go ahead and check the full screen box. This way, every time we load a game, that game will load in full screen. For the upscaling, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up to eight. You will have to type it in, and I think eight is the max that this emulator can go. Now, this emulator isn't hard to run, but if you're running your graphics at max settings, then make sure your PC has a somewhat decent CPU and graphics card. Turn on V-Sync so we don't get any screen tear. Now for the screen width and screen height, this is up to you. You can leave this as it is and have the black bars on the side, but I prefer to change my screen width to 1920 and the screen height to 1080. I wanna play my games widescreen and full screen. And because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and check the box next to widescreen stretch. Now, if you prefer not to have your games looking a little stretched, then just leave it at the default settings. Everything else here, we're gonna leave at default. Go ahead and exit out. Now let's set up our controller. Let's go back up to settings, controller configuration. Now I have tested an Xbox One, Xbox Series, and a PlayStation 5 controller with this emulator. All of those work. Any other controller you have, you will have to test it out for yourself. Next to gamepad, if you hit the drop down arrow, you should be able to see all of the controllers connected to your PC. So there's my PlayStation 5 DualSense controller and my Xbox Series controller. I'm gonna use my Xbox controller. Now let's go over to manage profiles and new profile gamepad. Go ahead and name this profile. I'll just call it P1. Now to map out your buttons, all you wanna do is click in the box next to the button you wanna map out and then you wanna hit the button on your controller that you want to be that button. And you just go through and do that with all of the buttons. 
Now the layout of an N64 controller was a bit confusing, so I'm gonna leave a picture on screen. You guys can pause the video and this should help you map your controller out. Once you are finished, come down to save and close. Now if you have multiple controllers connected to your PC, then you can repeat the same thing for controller 2, 3, or 4. But before we exit, come back over to controller 1 and set your profile to that profile we just created which I named P1. Now we can exit out. Now if you want to see your hotkeys or change any of the hotkey layouts, then back up to settings, hotkey configuration. And you can go through here and see what hotkeys are mapped to which key or you can change any hotkeys you want to use to a preferred key. Now let's go ahead and load up a game. Let's go up to file, open ROM, go ahead and locate wherever you have your N64 ROMs, in my case in that folder on my desktop, select the game you want to load, and that game should start up in full screen. Now I'm going to save my game. Now if we reopen that simple 64 folder, go back into this folder, go to our saves folder we created, and there's our save file we just created. Thanks for watching, I hope this video was helpful, if it was make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already.